Call the council meeting to order. Please be seated. Motion to reconvene the open council meeting. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. A motion to adopt the uh, minutes of the open council meeting held on March the 20th, 2017. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Motion to adopt the minutes of the uh, parcel tax roll review panel meeting held on March the 21st, 2017. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. A uh, motion to resolve into a committee of the whole. All those in favor, opposed, carried. And uh, moving over to the Councillor Dan Johnson show. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Uh, Your Worship, on behalf of the Finance, Financial Management Committee, I will would move the following recommendation that Council approve capital expenditure of $21.068 for infrastructure capital improvements as outlined in the report and that council authorized staff to bring down a capital reserve bylaw in the amount of 11.408 million inclusive of GST and draw from the sanitary sewer capital fund the amount of 6.106 million inclusive of GST and the waterworks utility capital fund in the amount of 4.537 million inclusive of GST. Second. Your work at this report is uh, for continuing work on the uh, capital program for our sewer and water systems. Pretty straightforward when you, they're big ticket items, but they're uh, pretty straightforward when you look at them. All right. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. And next one, Your Worship, uh, I would move that Council approve the award of nine contracts of insurance as specified in the report, the total amount payable to Willis Canada Inc to fund the insurance premiums of $900,000. Actual payment will be based on the final insurance agreements. Your Worship, this is a renewal of our um, various insurance policies around the city. All right, is there any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, carry. And next, Your Worship, uh, regarding emergency power at select key city facilities, if you see the feasibility study, I would move that council bring down a capital reserve bylaw in the amount of 250,000 inclusive of GST in the amount of 11,905 11, to finance the feasibility study to install emergency power supply at select city facilities as described in section 2.1 of the report. Second motion. Your Worship, uh, this report arises out of uh, the major windstorm that we had uh, roughly 18 months ago, um, whereby we had um, major power outages around the city. The uh, report that's before us is looking at the feasibility of, of setting up power generation, uh, temporary power generation facilities at some of our major rec centers so that we can offer safe dry space in case of an emergency. Thanks. I, I just wanted to comment when I looked at it is that $250,000 seems like a lot of money for a feasibility study. I'm sure the committee choked back a little we bit did. in regard to the uh, the amount. Um, if you don't if you don't mind, uh, maybe I can I can ask uh, one of our staff to comment on what's entailed in a, a feasibility study that's going to end up being a quarter million dollars. Who would be best, uh, Mr. Mr. Chu, Mr. to address it? All right, and you've got Leon as backup, I guess. Okay. Um, uh, I'll wait for the mic. The, the, the study does involve three different sites, and so the, the scope of the work is how to site the backup generator on the property, and then also the impact to the, that generation or those conduit and cables into the building. So there's a lot of technical work from uh, an engineering point of view for the electrical system, understanding the electrical load of the building, and also the structure of the building of how you're going to bring this power into, into each of these sites. Um, so I think that's the primary work that will be done. Also, when you, you're uh, upgrading the building to have this emergency backup power supply, that whole electrical panel, electrical service review needs to be done uh, to understand the full scope of work that you'll have for each site. And each site is particularly different in terms of how it's currently configured with this electrical service and the loads that it carries and how the panel is structured. So it's that level of work and detail to understand exactly what it'll cost the city to uh, upgrade each of these sites to have the emergency uh, power system installed in the property. 
So both building and electrical systems need to be looked at. And I, I always worry that uh, if we don't proceed, then it's lost money. You know, that uh, in this kind of a situation, you've expended the money, but there may be no benefit from them except knowing that you can't do it. And uh, is there a way to uh, to try and make sure that uh, that we assess early on whether or not it's worthwhile to take additional steps in regard to buildings as opposed to going through the whole process. If we arrive at a conclusion it's unlikely to be successful there, perhaps we can truncate the process to try to avoid spending the money. That, that's certainly what we can do with the consultant is have that first um, preliminary review of the site without the detailed work to say is this feasible on its face before we get into the detailed work that would happen. Um, and if they do that work and say, no, this you shouldn't do this level of investment to this site of this building at this time, that can be done to save costs on the studies that are done. Good. I'd like I'd like to carefully manage it to make sure that we're we're going to uh, if we're going to move to the next level, it's because we've already determined that conceptually this is likely to be successful and it's worth spending the money to look at the technical aspects and that that work later won't have to be repeated if we do initiate the work. So I'm, uh, I'm always hoping that uh, we're very protective of the taxpayer's money in this kind of exercise. It's an expensive operation to even just decide on emergency equipment. So I don't want to even talk about what it's going to cost at the end of the day to provide these facilities because I, I know that putting in additional power generation for buildings the size of our recreation centers can be very, very expensive. So, you know, I guess that's another element we have to look at and uh, maybe early on we can get some numbers attached to this that will give us some idea of magnitude on the project before we, we invest too much time and effort as we go down. All right, and I've, uh, I've got Leon. Uh, Mr. Gauss. Your Worship, yeah, just maybe briefly to add, I, I think it's so specific to the facilities too, is something like Edmonds, which was built relatively recently, has got some provision already in to allow for this. Something like Bonza is actually the one that will have to have a preliminary look, just because there were probably a likely a lot of work required to get uh, not just the electrical system supported, but even just to get space on that site uh, uh, to actually put a generator. So I think that by selecting the facilities carefully, they, you know, some will be very quick to say this looks very feasible, but others, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's so much work that they might look at, at a preliminary and just say it's going to be quite expensive even if you can feasibly do it. And, and as you say, that might be an early indication to come back before they fully pre-design, if you like, the, uh, the actual way you would do it. Good. I think it's important that while I expect staff to do that, to tell the public that we're going to be doing that to make sure they understand when you've got a big number like this that we're looking after the the, uh, the taxpayers' money as we go through that process and making sure that spending more on it will only happen if it appears to be worthwhile expenditures. Councillor Jordan. Yes, thank you, Worship. And uh, uh, the Director of Engineering said part of what I was originally going to say, but also to take note in the report that that into the future what we want to look at is when we do the re facilities replacement, for example, for um, C.G. Brown or Burnaby Lake or the new facility in Southside uh, Rings. We don't have a name for them yet, do we? No. <laughs> Southside uh, um, Ice Rinks that we would consider whether those sites would be appropriate for this kind of use and plan that in from, from the beginning. So pretty clearly Edmonds Rec Center uh, did have some part of that planned as part of it. And so this would be a, into the future an opportunity for us to say, okay, we're going to designate uh, the new Brentwood Rec Center as such a space and, and put that in from the very start, right? Yeah, and that, so that, that may be what we sense. come out of this with is saying it's yeah. not economical to do a facility that's retrofit. much older and retrofit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more economical for us to plan to include this in a facility we're building. Yeah. And uh, I just want to be sure that we don't spend a lot of money chasing a solution in a bad location rather than spending that same amount of money to include it in a new operation and where it's much easier 
I, I know the danger of retrofits, particularly with older buildings. And, and sometimes, you made those. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of expenditures that can end up being made to try to plug something in where it doesn't belong. So uh, we'll keep that in mind through this process, mm -hmm. and part of that should be making that kind of intelligent decision as to what are likely places to do this and what should wait until we construct new facilities. Mm -hmm. All right. With that, are you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And now, Your Worship, regarding Festival Burnaby Grant Program applications, I would move that uh, a Festival's Burnaby Grant neighborhood event in the amount of $1,500 be awarded to the Korean Writers Association of Canada Second. for the Canadian Korean Literary Festival to be held in July, July 9th, 17th. Chabot Center. Ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Next, Your Worship, that a festival's Burnaby Grant small scale event in the amount of 4000 be awarded to the Balu Fiji Association in British Columbia for the Fiji Festival to be held on July 15th at Swangard Stadium. Second. Great. It's moved and seconded. All those in favor, Opposed and carried. Uh, and also, Your Worship, that a festival's Burnaby Grant, small scale grant in the amount of $2,500, be awarded to the Malik Kurd Association for the New Raz Kurdish New Year celebration to be held on March 19th at Burnett Marine Park. Second motion. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Uh, okay, regarding the Edmonds City Fair and Classic Car Show, I would move that a festival's Burnaby Grant, small scale event in the amount of 5500 be awarded to the Edmonds City Fair and Classic Car Show Committee for the Edmonds City Fair and Classic Car Show to be held on July 16, 2017, along Edmonds Street. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And uh, small grants, Your Worship, I would move uh, <coughs> firstly that they, a grant in the amount of $5,000 be awarded to Scouts Canada for their scouting program for 2017. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, next, Your Worship, that a grant in the amount of $300 be awarded to the Cumberland Place community for their 100 Canada 150 block party to be held on July 1st, 2017. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Next, a, that a grant in the amount of $200 be awarded to the Maple Leaf Singers for their annual spring show, From the Heart, to be held on May 27th and 28th, 2017, at Massey Theatre, New Westminster. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And then, That's uh, an unusual one, Councillor Johnson, to be sponsoring an event in a, another. I don't disagree with your worship. Um, I think there was a uh, um, lot of discussion on this one. Uh, it's a thing that it was a small amount and that they are predominantly Burnaby people. That's why it was going We can take that in advice for next time. Yeah. I, I understand they are a Burnaby group, uh, yeah. Councillor Calandino's pointed out. The grant that we give them, they've been receiving the grant for several years. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And next, you worship regarding inclusion, BC Canada 150 celebration. I would move that the grant be, re be denied. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And then, uh, you worship that a one-time one grant in the amount of $20,000 be awarded to the Burnaby Neighborhood House. Second the motion. Uh, Your Worship, this is a, uh, a one-time grant towards the uh, to help them in, uh, with the establishment of the new facility in North Burnaby, uh, so that they can get their, their facility up and running. All right. So, this is to help them be able to get that uh, replacement facility up. Correct. North, being referred to as North House now. North House. That in, I went to the grand opening and it's. Looks like it's going to be a very busy place. <laughs> well, they just spent a lot of time teaching us not to call the other one south. I know. Well. <laughs> okay. Go figure. North and south, south. So now they're north and south? Yes. They're going to be Neighborhood House Association, but they have a north house and a south house. Okay. 
So the uh, 20,000 is not ongoing funding, it's 20,000 to be able to assist with this One time. expansion and move. Okay, you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carry. And next, Your Worship, that a grant in the amount of $1,000 be awarded to Burnaby Minor Hockey Association to assist with travel expenses for the Bantam A1 hockey team to participate at the BC Hockey Provincial Tournament to be held on March 18th to 23rd in Kamloops. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor, Oppose. carry. And then, uh, Your Worship, uh, regarding Variety Children's Charity of BC, that I would move that the grant be, be request be denied. Second. And this one doesn't meet our uh, criteria for grants. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. And thank you to the Financial Management uh, Committee doing all the heavy lifting this month. All right, moving on to the City Manager's Report. Item one is to request Council approval of the 2017 Seasonal Farmers Market at the Burnaby City Hall North parking lot. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, carried. This is to obtain council approval to award a contract for the road rehabilitation and construction of a linear park along Willington Avenue. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item three. This is to obtain council approval to award a contract for the supply and delivery of food products. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item four. This is a multiple family infill development in the Edmonds Town Center plan, and this is to seek authorization to forward this application to a public hearing on April the 25th, 2017. Now, Councillor McDonnell. This has come from staff, but you want to refer it to the Community Development Committee? All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Moving on to item five. This is uh, a low-rise apartment and townhouse development and expanded community park. This is authorization to forward to a public hearing on April the 25th. Second. Been moved and seconded. Councillor Jordan. Um, thank you, Worship. I just wanted to comment briefly on, on this one. Um, again, this is a proposal for a new multifamily units at SFU, a total of 131, if my addition is correct. But what I wanted to comment on in this is that uh, almost a third, more than 30% of the uh, homes being proposed are three bedroom plus, uh, three bedroom plus den, three bedroom plus option units, uh, adaptable units, etc. So, and it, it's um, interesting in that I know some of the people at other public hearings that have now resided in university for some considerable length of time have commented that with the growing families and the you know, that it would be nice to have the opportunity to have some larger um, units for them to upsize into, but still remain as part of the university community, right? So even though they might have bought a one, one or two bedroom apartment uh, in the in the towers there, so this is going to provide an option where, you know, they may want to sell a current place and move into a larger townhouse type development. So I think it's a really positive to add to the mix of housing uh, opportunities available up on the mountain. And it's, I look forward to hearing some positive feedback from the residents there. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a, an item that's been brought up at, uh, at public hearings and has been brought up with uh, the university that they wanted larger units, uh, their growing families, as right. you mentioned. and. Uh, the university has responded, and that's one of the nice things about being in the position as the university of working through the community trust is they have been able to go out and seek developments that particularly reflect the needs of the university. So 
I'm sure it'll be received very positively. Councillor Calendino. Um, a comment on uh, the uh, changes of uh, the uh, uh, density here that uh, they're transferring density to one building rather than several buildings in, in order to allow expansion of the uh, park uh, at 49411 University Crescent and I think that's a very good thing that will allow playground and more space for young children to be able to to play in there and I, I, I think staff has done a good job to work with the developer in making that specific change it does not increase the density of the overall plan but it simply increases the density in this specific building rather than more than one building if I'm correct. Thank you Councillor Calendino and uh, is there any other comments? Seeing none, ready for the question? All those in favor opposed and carried. Item six. This is an apartment development with underground parking uh, in the Broadview Community Plan. This is uh, authorization to forward to a public hearing on April the 25th. Councillor Jordan. Um, thank you, Worship. I just have one question of Stafford. There's two city properties, one of which will be incorporated in this, and then the one at 3754 Norfolk is not incorporated. Is, is that because the developer didn't want to or because we couldn't get the right, the right price or <laughs> what could, could you respond to that? Felche, please. Your, your Worship, it's because it's being reserved for the uh, development site to the east. To the east. So it's a part of the land area that will support that next phase of development on that front. So we didn't offer to include it with this, with right. this redevelopment. Okay. Thank you. So this piece of property will help the viability of another multiple family development in the other portion. We'll use this property as part of its site development area. That makes sense. Yep. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. All right, a motion that the committee rise and report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Motion the report of the committee be adopted. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Moving on to bylaws, Councillor Kang. Thank you, Worship. For first, second, and third reading, I move that bylaw number 13733 be now introduced and read three times. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. For consideration and third reading, I move that bylaw number 13644 be now considered and read a third time. And moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. For abandonment, I move that bylaw number 11458, 11952, 12211, 12218, 12313, 12556, 12674, 12873, 12874, 13024, 13155. 13283, 13304, 13441, be now abandoned. I wanted to congratulate staff. You're cleaning up the books as we often had bylaws that had been sitting there for a long period of time without any action on them. And uh, I see that you're being very aggressive in clearing up some of these. Uh, so good on you. I, I think it's always a, uh, a good practice to make sure that we clear out the uh, bylaws that in fact haven't proceeded. Some of them for Councillor King's work. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for the question? Oh, Councillor Johnson. The planner, um, I'm curious about 12218, the Heritage Revitalization Agreement. I'm just curious what that parcel is. Never thought that question was coming, did you? Fourth one. Okay. It's not the church, though. It is the church. It is the church. Okay. But it was to build social housing in the back of the church. Yeah, thank you. 
All right. Very good. I'm surprised, Mr. Pelche. That was that wasn't bad. That's right. Pass the test again. You ready uh, for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. That concludes bylaws, and that brings us to new business. Councillor Jordan. Um, thank you, Worship. In the, in the purple pages, there's a very short email, um, which is re being referred to the Public Safety Committee, and I'm not a member of that. <laughs> but I, so I would like to to speak to it. But uh, I the the email is from a person in Edmonton, which is very unusual uh, that we get emails from Edmonton. But while some of you were uh, out of the country, you were all aware that we had the tragic traffic accident on uh, Canada Way um, just over here, and in some of the Coverage and response to that um, is clear that speed was a factor in in that accident. And in one of the um, interviews I did with the media, they said, "Well, what can you do um, to slow people down?" And I, I uttered the, one of the third rail of public policy in this province: the word "photo radar," uh, in the sense that I I was expressing that I thought it would be a good idea to bring it back for specialized situations, you know, not province-wide, not at the bottom of Royal Oak Hill, but in areas such as this where there have been many crashes that are speed-related, where road and traffic conditions do not allow themselves um, easy enforcement opportunities by the police, and that's this, the case along this stretch of Canada mm -hmm. Way where it's really difficult for our officers to find a location there where they can safely pull traffic over that are speeding just to give them a ticket, right? So, um, and actually there's been quite a bit of pickup down that. I've had quite a few comments on social media um, saying, right on, good good for you, time to talk about it again. Um, one letter saying, don't you dare <laughs> I didn't even talk about it. But now on the weekend also there was a, a letter to the editor in the now commenting that you know, yeah, it's something that we should talk about. Um, potentially Petulo Bridge, same situation. They put the radar speed trap on the other side of the bridge, um, but it doesn't slow people down when they're actually on the bridge. And how do you safely, you know, police uh, and enforce um, speed, speeding on the bridge itself? So, so there may be other opportunities like that. And the letter to the editor suggested on some parts of the Sea to Sky Highway, Etc. So, you know, I hope when the Public Safety Committee gets this item of correspondence, they might look back in the past because I understand it. I remember Council actually um, doing a resolution, I think, to UBCM or something that, that would ask, and I think Councillor Dolly, will you mention this to me, that we allow cities to establish space <coughs> photo radar in certain, you know, certain key places within our city, and I think it's something worth revisiting. So. I hope the members of the committee will take beyond the one line email <laughs> from someone in Edmonton and I'm I'm sure this person saw, you know, that accident and saw yes, what to, what could be done about that. But but it's not the only what I'm trying to say is it's not the only correspondence I've received and I don't know if others have heard comments about it. But yeah. I think it's something to that we should consider what kind of action we as a city could take in order to try and have that rein reintroduced in certain areas. Well, it uh, I can tell you it's not an item that is in demand in my office, more photo radar, but there obviously are some very unique situations where photo radar can be applied that uh, deals with excessive speeds, you know, well beyond normal posted speeds and uh, is capable of registering those because that's the problem that we've got there. I think you have to have realistic speed limits that reflect the way traffic moves on certain areas, and uh, and sometimes they're not realistic in the sense that they're they're very low for an area that has uh, traffic moving at a higher pace. But on the other hand, the accidents we've had have been a result of, of completely irresponsible driving 
on uh, on Canada Way, and and so I think with good sense they can post photo radar that reacts at certain speeds that will ensure that you're only catching those people who are recklessly driving down Canada Way as opposed to those who may be slightly over the, the speed limit. And uh, because I'd hate to see that happening on a situation like Royal Oak Hill, where it's very difficult to down. hit a 30 kilometer or a 50 kilometer uh, speed limit down Royal Oak Hill. Um, so we've got to find the right balance, but that doesn't mean we should throw the idea out because it may be that photo radar could have a real impact on stopping people from uh, from going down there at high speeds. And I know that it's been a situation for decades that uh, there's been young people lose their life racing down Canada Way in that location. You know, so it it has been a problem for a long time, and I hope... Uh, I know that uh, Councillor Calendino and his committee will look at it. I think the bringing together of the Traffic Safety Committee and the Public Safety Committee will help because now you've got people from uh, the different um, community police stations on the, on the, w in the discussion, and you've got all of the players that we need from uh, policing to be there to discuss the issue. So I think we should look at any creative solution that will help stop the carnage on Canada Way. We don't want any more people to lose their lives on that road. And if photo radar is uh, one of the options we have to look at, then I think we should. Um, Councillor Dhaliwal. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to supplement what Councillor Jordan had said. We had a quick chat about this one. I felt that perhaps uh, the government wouldn't have an app, any appetite to bring it back. But, but if if local governments took responsibility that this would be under the uh, under some kind of sanctions from a usage of photo radar because local council should be able to declare some areas where we believe it would be a beneficial not only to to just uh, just the residents but also the driver in this case um, Canada way your worship is is a standard city road which is, should be 50 kilometers most of the time, and we got signs there, we got billboards there, everything we can think of, flashing signs, but we hear from people all the time that this stretch, particularly because the light from Burris to Springer is a quarter ways distance, people just continually speed. And, and, but, and there's also other situations where there are bus stops on both sides of the road. It's just hugely impossible for people to cross safely or sometimes even think or so we we need to do other things as well but but I believe two things that need to be stressed to the government is one that look this this isn't about making money that was one of the concerns people had because photo radars was so seen as a cash grab and one people don't understand it government local governments don't always get it it is it's it's a per capita basis money that comes back from <coughs> photo radar could be in Burnby. We don't all get that money. It's not about money. It's about safety. That's one. Number two, that if, if the provincial government is not able to just openly radar, out, but they should be able to, based on local governments, making a, 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 some very deliberate decisions, such as this one, you should be able to deploy that. I believe it's a doable thing, and it should be for this for the safety of local uh, residents. So I support the idea, and then obviously the local um, the committee might have some other ideas as well. But I'd like to see something brought back. Also, while I have the floor, Your Worship, is there there is no motion? I guess here we can carry on with the other business as well. I've got uh, looks like some other speakers on this, yeah, uh, Councillor Johnson and Calendino, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. I, 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 I understand the comments of the previous speakers on photo radar, but it does give me a bit of concern. Um, I think that it is a good tool, but it should be used as a, as, as, as a tool. Um, my concern is, is that once the city of Burnaby was to acquire photo radar, how do you ensure that only it's only used on specific routes and it just doesn't become a, a general tool of our police force? That's the concern I one concern. The other thing is being someone that turns left on Burris off of Canada Way several times a day, I can tell you that that flashing light that, that's supposed to slow people down coming down the hill actually motivates people to speed up. They, they don't, that's supposed to warn you that the light's going to change and they're supposed to slow down. 
but you watch, you see them up the top of the hill. Once the light, once the flashing light starts, they just speed and hit hit this floor down the hill, so they can get through before the light changes. So that's, I mean, that's as much the problem as as the, the speed. That that light is not doing what it's supposed to do. It's actually motivating people to do the other. I I think that uh, Councillor Calendino your committee will look at all possible solutions. It is not automatically to go to photo radar, but to, to look at whatever options that may be available through uh, discussions with the police, et cetera. Yeah. And, and just for the council's information, the uh, RCMP reports on traffic issues uh, just about at every meeting and uh, deputy city manager there who used to be the chief uh, uh, superintendent knows uh, it is one of the biggest concerns of the uh, of the force and uh, we're having the uh, priorities for the year coming up in April and that could be one of the items in the discussion on what uh, type of methods to use in slowing down traffic on kind of the way and in other major routes not just kind of the way. I think uh, one of the problems Councillor Calendino too is that uh, there's it's very difficult to get pullouts on Canada Way for the police to be able to enforce the uh, the speed limit and so this is the only one. I think there's one up up the street, but yeah. there's one more intersection they could put. But but it is uh, it is a very important item, and we don't want uh, this issue to end up being one that uh, that doesn't get some action. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know that we can do anything about photo radar, but obviously the uh, RCMP does use radar guns to check people. And I think some of the uh, Potential dangerous driving should be proceeded against too, where you're you're well in excess of the speed limit on that, because I think there are people who are are doing you know 90 and 100 kilometers down there, and those people need to face the full brunt of the law mm -hmm. in regard to that kind of driving. They generally do, sir. Okay, we'll leave that with your committee to come back okay. and report. Um, we have a motion on the floor on this. It's already been referred. Good. All right. And with that, Councillor Dollywell, back to you. Your Worship, on the pink page is uh, there's item B. I'd like to just refer to the staff for response. Uh, to the to the right of place. It is. <coughs> okay. Yep. So going to the committee. Yep. All right. Good. Thanks. But we'll ensure there is a response, Councillor Dollywell, as you requested. Is that I know that I'm personally going to respond at some point. All right. Is there anything else? You ready for a motion to adjourn? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you to staff again tonight, and uh, thank you to everyone who attended the meeting. Who's going to be here for the public hearing tomorrow? Put up your hands, everybody who wants to be here for the public hearing. There we go. <laughs> I tried to put it in the best way possible. I love public hearings. <laughs>